Hi, I'm doing the tutorial for Jin uh, for our office hour on December 2nd. Okay, um, actually I want my file to be open here, so... Because I have more layers than you do. And I like the layers, so... I'm going to control all, select everything you've got, copy it to clipboard, and I'm going to go new and use my basic one template drop them back in. Okay, um, first thing we need to do is bring your side view into position. I'm going to move the end of the side view to the end of the top view, go into front seaplane, rotate it up 90 degrees. Put it on a different colored layer. And as we know, we've discussed this already, it um, is too tall. So I'm going to select that and non uniform scale it down to 5 millimeters. To get 5 millimeters, going to use a circle diameter, start at 0, and just type in 5 pull straight up. Now actually we decided it would be better to be like at um, 6 or 6.5 like a um, bridal ring, bridal stone. Okay, non-uniform scale. Origin is 0, don't want to change anything in this direction. Uh, going vertically I want to use the highest quad for your side view to the top quad of the circle. Enter, I'm done. I can throw away that circle. It was just a reference. I need to... a maquette. The point of a maquette is just to see if you're getting what you want. The maquette has very little to do with your actual finished model, except for it tells you which direction to go and which direction not to go. Uh, because of that, you don't want to spend too much time on a maquette because the time you spend you can't get back. So i um, going to go about this a little bit differently than I have before. Um, well this piece I'll keep the same. The back. Oh, I locked the layer. I am curious, um, what did you see happening here? Are these folds higher, or is this the highest, and they are lower, and this is lower still? This is lower, lowest. Like, this is the highest. Okay, so you see this is the lowest, and this is the highest. Yeah. Okay, so before we go... The light in the middle is the highest. Okay. Um, have you considered doing it the other way? Because since this is going to be the highest in this piece, if this highest middle has to go on top of this highest middle, oh, maybe this is cool, like this. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I would consider doing that. Um, and in that case, I can actually do a fillet here to clean up this line work and this line work. Interesting, Phil, it didn't work. Oh, they don't want to pay attention to me, so we use trim instead. There. So, you have these on the inside, um, those on the outside. Um, this is awfully close and tiny surfacing for Rhino. You probably don't want it that tiny. I'm going to grab the control point. I joined them together already. And move it down to about here. That's a more meaningful distance on your piece. In fact, that's even still tiny. On the real piece, that will be so small. Hard for you to clean. Hard for you to work with. That's better. Okay. Going to join an outline here for the cookie. Um, 
what I've been doing in the in the previous I've worked with you a little bit on this before is I have been treating this as one big plate I've decided I'm not going to do that this time because it's not at all how you'll handle the real piece I'm going to handle this as a separate piece that was just an adjustable blend curve play with the handles until I get something that's kind of nice join um, what does this represent? This gonna be it's an elevation, an engraved yes. line. It's an elevation. elevation. So is it a it's thicker? A so it's a little bit higher. Okay. All right. And actually, before I mirror it, I'm going to go ahead and take the point off because those long tapered points are going to make it hard to do a smooth form. Only thing you can do a hard point like that on would be a flat surface, a flat sheet. Anything with a dome, you're going to get a wicked crease off of that point. I'm going to split this. I don't want to trim it because I want to be able to look at it for reference and make my blend curve sympathetic to what you had there to begin with. like that. Is that okay? Mirror that over. And I'll take the point off of here as well. Yeah. And split it. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, it was very ag aggressive. Uh, blend curve. Blend curve. Since I want to have a, a, a uniform point, I'll hold the shift key down. That gives me symmetrical point adjustment. You can see both points adjusting at the same time on both sides. Gives me a nice symmetrical blunt point instead of a sharp point. Join this together. And actually we discussed this. Um, the point in the back is also a problem. So we will remove that the same way. It's a really big circle do it when that size. This one I can trim out because I know what I'm going to look. I already am aware of how I want it to look, so I don't need any reference for it. I want it to look like that. So, join those together. And now I have my my closed curves, okay? For the initial start of this piece, those are all we need. We don't need any of the uh white lines at this point. That's enough. Okay, so for your basic back block, I'm just going to do an extrusion straight up. Make it too deep. Make it solid. Come into your side view. Take the top curve that we had here, and I'm going to extrude it straight over. Both sides. Big enough to cut all the way through that. It's a little short, so I'm going to extend the surface. I'll extend it by 10. Check the direction. And difference. Solid Boolean difference. That gives us our first piece. Next thing I'm going to do is the center piece here going to extrude it the same way. And I'm going to extrude this surface both sides, this curve both sides. And that's just big enough to cut, so we'll use it. Check direction. And difference. And you can see we're very, very close here. That concerns me a little bit. I'm going to want that to come up a little bit more than it did. Okay, so to get that to happen, I'm going to turn the control points on this surface.
And I'm going to grab these two rows. And I got something else in here I didn't mean to get. And move them down, either right C plane or front C plane, whichever one allows me to move vertically. I actually move them up. That gives me a, a better distance here. That might be a little too much. I like that. Jin, as long as I move the control point straight up and down, nothing changes in the top. So if it's long enough to cut in the top, if this is long enough, as long as I move those control points straight up and down from the side, I use ortho and move them straight up and down. It won't change in the top view. It'll stay long enough. Always try and use ortho when you do control point editing. That's just a general advice to everybody. And when you're, especially when you're beginning, if you're going to do control point editing, especially on surfaces, try and use shift key. So you're either moving straight up and down, straight left to right, straight forward and back. Because that way you have more control. You know exactly where they're going. Should still be good. Acceptable. I'm going to do this piece. Don't want both sides. Don't want grid snap. And I can pull this one to where I think is good. Something like that. But I do have a side view curve that covers this. It's right here. You've already drawn it. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude that surface. We might as well go both sides. It'll be too big, but we don't care. We're just using it to cut with. And what I can see is that first off, I'm going to change the color of this so we're not fighting with that is the surface isn't nearly long enough. So I'm going to extend the surface. So now it's long enough. But I can see that this cuts this way down low, and I can't have it down low. I need to have it high enough to overlap. So I'm going to turn on the points. Now this extension I added, Jen, added a lot of strange points. In fact, it may have made a poly surface. No, it didn't. But it gave me a lot of weird points. I don't want a lot of weird points, so I'm going to rebuild this surface. Oh, 5.5 five is fine. It's a pretty simple surface, so it won't matter. Turn on the points. And that's going to be easier for me to adjust. Grab these two rows, move them up until I clear that orange. You notice I rotate so I can drag a window and select what I want. Uh, of course, another option is to use the select toolbar control point you can grab you know with this and select either U or V so you can select a point for example and if you hit that direction it'll select all of them connected this way if you select this button it'll select all of them going the other way so you can either drag a window to select or you can use the button up here it doesn't matter whichever you find easiest now I can't keep because my challenge is here, Jen, is that if I do this, this is now barely clearing. And I don't like that. Um, and this middle row is a little high. Because I want it to come nice and low. And this is what you'll be doing. This is basically sculpting. 
It's like you're using clay. I have to decide if I think this is coming down too sharp. I think it is a little bit, for my taste. You're the designer, so when you do this at home, you will decide for yourself. But I will, I'm going to move it up a little bit here. I think that's good for this tablet. Now, I can either re-extrude this tablet, Jin, or I can just non-uniform scale it. I'm going to non-uniform scale. Oops. There. Origin is always zero, hopefully if your model centered at zero. I don't want to change this. I want to change that. Nothing for Z. Just so that I can cut it off and have this curve. Flip that around. Solid difference. I can mirror that over now. Okay. But now this is a little short back here. That sucks because I went through all the trouble to get it just right. We have two choices here. I can undo, undo, undo and get back before the boolean or I can take this apart and work from here. Which one do you want to see? I'll take it apart because okay. you haven't seen that before. Okay. I'm going to extract a surface. You can get extract surface from this menu right here. But you can also get it, the explode button. If you right click it, it, it extracts surfaces, which is very helpful. Extract that surface. Untrim all. Untrim all takes all of the shape off and gets you back to the original surface. So there's that original surface we used to boolean. Gonna take, uh, I'm going to extract again. Take off the sides. Going to do the same thing. Untrim all. That's the original height I had this. Now I can join this bottom surface back onto this surface and I can go solid cap, planar holes, and any, because planar in Rhino just means flat. This will cover any flat hole. So now I have this back. So it didn't take me very long. Okay. I'm going to turn on the control points on this surface again. Take this back row. There's something down in here I keep selecting. Um, vertical C plane, right or front. And see, that gives me a little more distance in the back. I like that. I want to have this row as well. Oops, wrong button. I'm going to move it up just a little bit too, just so I get that soft arc going. I'm going to look at it from the side and see if I like what's going on. I think that's okay. Analyze direction. Should be the same. Nope, it changed. When I extracted the surface, Rhino flipped it. It does that arbitrarily. Um, difference. Okay. So, this gives us the basic form of this. None of these surfaces will be in your finished model. They're not nice enough. But they are a place to start from. Okay? Now I'm going to look at this back piece. Bring back those white curves. Oh, your white curves. You have a white layer and I have a white layer. First thing I want to bring in are these. To get these curves up on top, I'm going to project them. But before I project, I'm going to go ahead and pull that surface off. So right click again to extract surface. Pick a different color so it comes off like so. I can turn this off. And now I can grab these two curves and I can project them. And that'll project them just like a light on a movie screen, straight from the seaplane towards the surface. Okay, and I am going to split this surface with those curves. 
Okay. I'm going to move this surface down just to get a sense of what I'm looking at. I don't want this to drop down that deep in the front. Okay? So. I want to work with extrusions again because extrusions are great for maquette work. I want the outline of this. To get the outline, do you know where this toolbar comes from? It comes from curves from objects right here. If you put the pop the fly out, it gives you this. I just use this so often, Jen, that I take it and see when it goes purple over there on the side? It means I've docked it. And then I can grab right here when I get the side to side arrow. And that way I have it open all the time because I use it constantly. Um, this command, duplicate border. will capture the outline of that. I want it flat. And the easiest way to make it flat is to project it to C-plane, which on our commands is C-enter. Um, project to C-plane. Yes, delete input objects. So now I have that same curve flat. Okay. So now that I've got that, I'm going to untrim this surface. untrim all. I'm going to rebuild that surface. That 5.5 five is working good for me. It's a very simple, although I'm kind of losing a little bit. See how it's falling away? You can see the line where it used to be and the line where it's it's going. I don't want it to change that much, so I'm going to go 7, 7, and now you'll see it's matching.